What's going on, everybody? It is week 11, Joes versus Pros in the NFL. He's Rafael Esparza. I'm Scott Spritzer. We're talking about the betting report as we get closer to the weekend. Uh, the Joes and the Pros doing battle. Uh, not a whole lot of differences this week right now between the Sharps and the public. I'm sure that's going to change as we get into the weekend. But we'll talk about a couple of games, including uh, the Sunday night game between the Chiefs and the Raiders. Also, our free play on the Packers and Colts. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, a quick note, if you've yet to become a member over at DocSports.com and just want to give a trial run, it's a real cool way to do it. You click on that link below the video and you get yourself set up for the free $60 account. You can use the free 60 bucks on any of Raphael's daily plays, packages, any of my daily packages, or anybody else on the roster at DocSports.com. It is as simple as that. All right, Raphael, four games to chat about. I, I don't want to bury the lead. I want to jump into the freebie right away. It is Green Bay at Indy. Uh, this line has dropped a little bit today. Indy's gone from a two-and-a-half point favorite down to one-and-a-half. Uh, and while the public has been on Green Bay uh, right out of the blocks this week, if we would have done this video 24 hours ago, we'd be talking about the Sharps being on the Colts. This would have been a Joes versus Pros, but I'm starting to see some sharp action come in on Green Bay, and it's moved that number down a point this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, my uh, betting screen lit up like Christmas uh, this, early this afternoon. It was all Green Bay action coming in, uh, which is kind of shocking. Uh, I thought it was going to stay flat until maybe move, maybe over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and, of course, numbers would move on Sunday. But this early – uh, makes me uh, take a step back and maybe really dissect this game a little bit more. Uh, my freebie on this one, I, I like to over uh, on this game. A, it's Green Bay. You know they're going to put up points. Uh, their last road game against San Francisco, they put up 34 points. Uh, they're always going to average anywhere between the high 20s and 30s. You figure when Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers is on uh, the field. And the Colts defense has taken a step backwards a little. I mean, they let the uh, Baltimore score 24. The Lions put up 20 points on them. This defense uh, towards the beginning of the year uh, where they held the Bears doing it just the seven, and, and they were stopping a run. Uh, to me, the second half, their defense just runs out of gas to me, uh, it looks like. So I'm going to take the over on this one. I think both teams score in the high 20s. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Yeah, I cannot disagree with that. In fact, I like the over, too. And, you know, when they went into that game against Baltimore a couple of weeks ago talking about the Colts, uh, all the arguments against Indy were that they had played a pretty soft slate, especially some soft offenses, and you mentioned a couple uh, in your analysis – and then they did actually hold Baltimore and Tennessee to less than 300 yards apiece, but uh, it wasn't exactly efficient defense. As you mentioned, they gave up you know, 41 points the last two games combined. Uh, meanwhile, I did like the look of their offense last week against the Titans. They put up 430 yards in the, go in the game. Uh, they, they totaled 34 points in the contest. The thing is, in this particular game, they are finally running into a passing combo in Rodgers and Devontae Adams which is the best they'll have seen so far this season. I think Indy can score some points here also. So I'm with you. It looks like our free play is a consensus, if we made a call that, between two people. But uh, over 51 and a half for me also in this one, Raphael. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. If Indy can run the ball like they did against Tennessee, then uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting and a very close game for all four quarters. But – I mean, like me and you both said, I think both offenses are going to be able to score on some soft Ds on both sides of the ball. So, I mean, for me, the over has to be the play. Eagles and Browns. Browns laying three and a half, total 47. And this is a Joes versus Pros game right now. Just kind of looking at my screen here. We got the public on Cleveland, about 60% of the tickets thus far. Uh, the Sharps are currently on the Eagles, about 54% of the Sharp money coming in on Philly. And, you know, Raphael, the thing about the Eagles – they expect to be the healthiest they've been virtually all season. And you know, Cleveland's been killing bankrolls. They've dropped four in a row against the spread. The offense has bogged down without you-know-who at wide receiver. Yeah, and let's face it. We, I don't want to talk about the bad beat if you had Cleveland last oh. week. Uh, and, and the NFL, if he runs out of bounds, Chubb, uh, I think it was less than the yard, not even a full yard when he runs out of bounds. Uh, I can imagine – uh, what the sports books were doing uh, then, uh, even though I don't work in the books anymore. But that's a bad beat. But you're right. The public's always going to bet on Cleveland. The, the public's been betting Cleveland for the past two years. So that doesn't shock me. The wise guy action on Philly, are the wise guys watching the Philadelphia Eagles play football? I mean, I, that kind of blows me a little bit because I'm sorry. Carson Wentz is not that good of a quarterback this year. They lose the Giants. Not just bad loss, but a 
poorly lost against a Giants team that was able to move the ball pretty easy against that Philadelphia defense. I'm not sold on the Eagles. If I had to pull a gun to my head and and bet this game, I'd probably take a shot at Cleveland because I think that Cleveland has the better athletes on the other side, and they have confidence on the other side. That Eagles team, there's finger pointing in the locker room. I don't think there's going to be a lot of new faces next year when the Eagles hit the field. Give me the more confident team. I can't believe I'm going to say that. The Cleveland Browns is the more confident team. Uh, but I'm taking, uh, I'll take Cleveland on this one. Real quick thought about what you mentioned about the, well, if you had Cleveland, I was going to say a heartbreaking loss. If you had Cleveland, it wasn't a heartbreaking loss. You got that big win when Chubb stepped out of bounds, like you said, inside the one-yard line after about a 50-yard run. And, and I saw a lot of people, um, and obviously not betters, on social media talking about, you know, the fix was in. the fix, yeah, Come on. Bottom line is, is Nick Chubb finally woke up and realized what he was supposed to do. And if he would have taken a knee, gone to the ground or gone out of bounds, right after he got the first down around midfield, there would have been no controversy and no heartbreak, or uh, I guess you could say, or going crazy if you had uh, the other side, the Texans, uh, when he went out of bounds at the one. So it was the right thing to do. It left no chance for a miracle comeback win from the other side. As far as this game, real quick, as we wrap it up, here's your choice. Philly, one and six against the spread off a straight up loss. Cleveland, four straight spread losses, six and 20 against the number on their November slide. So there's your choice. Uh, Titans at the Ravens. Ravens land six and a half, total 49. Public and Sharps in agreement on this one. Uh, They're both on Tennessee, and and we've seen kind of a flip flop with the Ravens over the past few weeks because this was almost an automatic for the public, and now the public's starting to go against them. Real quick memo for Mike Vrabel Can you shore up your special teams issues? You're looking about maybe a step above a middle school team right now, if that. Uh, As far as the revenge motivation, Raphael, I'm not real big on revenge motivation when it comes to professional sports handicapping, Uh, but Tennessee did kind of lay the blueprint to forcing Lamar Jackson into thinking a little bit too much, into making mistakes. We saw it in the playoffs last year, so there is a little bit of motivation for Baltimore in this one, but the problem is... Lamar has not made that next step as far as being a consistent, accurate passer downfield. Well, I don't want to put it all on uh, on Jackson making that next step. I mean, they're just they're just missing parts. They're just not the same team as last year. And if I have to hear that one more time on TV, oh, last year they were doing this. Last year they were doing it. This ain't the same team as last year. And I think the the video has shown it. And I think I've been telling people one thing COVID probably did is all the coaches sat back and watched how to beat Lamar Jackson, and that's what they did. That's what they're mm-hmm. doing. And I would not be shocked if it happens again this week. I think Tennessee is a real better team. And here's another thing confidence i mean we saw lamar jackson at his press conference on monday i uh, had no confidence in the way he was talking the way the locker room they're missing a, a lot of studs on offense they can't run the ball uh, i'm all on tennessee if i had to uh, pull the trigger on this one because i want nothing to do with a team that's again finger pointing in a locker room and talking about who's missing their uh, their their assignments and who's not uh during press conferences tennessee even though you said it. Their special teams has been awful, and I know they've dropped three out of four, and that one win was against the Chicago Bears, which me and you could probably put up a touchdown and beat the Chicago Bears, where we had to forcefully watch on Monday Night Football. But, yeah, I want nothing to do with Baltimore. I don't know if we could put up points, but I know we could probably hold Chicago to a field goal. I do know that. Oh, we could put up <laughs> points. I, I could take Khalil Mack. I could take Khalil Mack on the line. Oh, okay. (laughs) I always knew that. I was just waiting for the confidence to come out in your press conference about that. Uh, But I'll tell you what, as far as Lamar Jackson is concerned, yeah, I mean, we saw a a down, deflated, dejected Lamar Jackson uh, on Monday. And the week before, we saw him, you know, kind of whining a little bit about defenses are calling out the plays. And then I thought it was – I don't know if it was smart for him to come out publicly, but when one of your top assistant coaches comes out and says, that happens all the time. You just hear it more now because there's no fans in the stands – uh, to to block out the noise that's happening on the field. So he's just got to get his confidence back. Listen, he can hit the, dip, the, the dink and dunks. I mean, the guy can come out and go 18 for 22 on 10-yard passes, but he's got to start throwing that ball downfield. They're not the same team, though, as you mentioned, as they were a year ago. If I could trust the Tennessee special teams, I would recommend a play on the over right now, but I got to wait a little bit closer to the weekend before I jump into that. Plus, you got to take weather into, fact, or into, into factor when you look at uh, the Baltimore weather coming up this weekend. Uh, Sunday night football. Now, this isn't a public versus Sharps game, but it's a cool game to talk about. Chiefs laying seven on the road in Vegas on the strip, the total 56 and a half. Uh, I had mentioned that the public and Sharps are in agreement on this one. 
I uh, thought we'd talk about it anyway. And in that Tennessee Baltimore uh, kind of open, I had mentioned that I'm not real big on revenge in professional sports. However, it is the Kansas City Chiefs, and they felt quite disrespected in the loss to the Raiders. Not that they got outplayed and got beat, but apparently, according to Andy Reid on, in his Monday press conference, uh, the Raiders were taking victory laps in their team buses around Arrowhead Stadium after winning the football game. Now, you know, John Gruden and the Raiders come out and said, I don't know what our bus driver was doing. We didn't tell him to do that. But that's the writing on the chalkboard right now in the Kansas City locker room. And uh, so there is that little bit of motivation, Raphael, but I I'm not sure that means a lot, except for maybe the opening few minutes of a game. And then if you're up big and you have a chance to really rub a team's face in it, kind of kind of comes back into play again then. But from basically late first quarter to early fourth quarter, I don't think revenge motivation in professional sports means a whole lot. No, I think uh, revenge only is key when you're looking at maybe pro wrestling on TV, revenge factor is <laughs> huge. But other than that, in football and basketball, I don't. I, I'm with you. I really kind of throw it to the side. You said the first couple of plays, you, you might see some jibber jabbering on what happened in their last game. But throughout the whole four quarters, it's not going to make that difference. All it is, will the will the Raiders be able to run the ball with Jacobs? If that's the case, and that keeps Kansas City on the sideline watching, then we can see maybe another upset with Vegas beating Kansas City. And would not shock me. Kansas City's defense has not been lights out, and they've been able to give up a lot of runs on the ground game. Raiders have been able to run the ball, not with just Jacobs, but multiple running backs have been able to put up some big numbers. Uh, I like this plus the points uh, on this one. I want to wait to see if the public keeps on pushing this up. I don't think we're going to see seven and a half or something. We'll probably just see juice moving around. Uh, but it would not, again, shock me to see a, a lot of Kansas City money coming in because let's face it, it's Mahomes, Super Bowl yep. champs. They're always going to get uh, that kind of action. But I'm really excited to see the running attack of the Raiders on this game. Jacobs and Booker can be really, really huge. Booker almost ran for 100 yards against Denver. Jacobs ran for, one, I think, 115. Uh, I think those two, plus if Carr can uh, limit the turnovers, he had no INTs, I think the last two games, even though he didn't throw any touchdown passes against Denver, but they held the ball and not make any mistakes. This game's going to be fantastic. I'm just hoping and praying that the Kansas City Joey's bet this game up. Maybe I can get plus money on the juice on seven, but I'm looking to take the Raiders. I can't believe this because I've been eating crow on the Raiders all year long because I didn't think they were going to be uh, this decent. Well, you know what? I think, you know, obviously, I don't think. We know this is going to happen. Just like Baltimore last Sunday night in their loss to New England when the folks behind the counter, like you used to be, uh, were cheering for the Ravens to lose outright because there was all that teaser money. There was also parlay money coming in on Baltimore. I mean, every Joe I know was playing Baltimore as the back end of a teaser, teasing them down to one, thinking all they had to do was win that game outright. And they lost. And you're going to see the same thing here, obviously. Listen, in Vegas, the fact that the Joes aren't all over the Raiders shows you, I think, where the public's going to be uh, throughout the course of this week, right up until game time. And there's going to be a whole bunch of teaser money. Uh, the public gets caught up in all that revenge stuff that you watch on all the different networks, you know, when they're talking about Andy Reid saying they circled the stadium and all that kind of good stuff. They'll buy into that. And they'll be teasing Kansas City down to one or pick them uh, when and where they can. They're also going to hear about Andy Reid's unbelievable 18-3 and straight-up mark uh, mm -hmm. as a head coach with the Eagles and the Chiefs combined off a of bye week. They'll hear about his 15-3 and spread run, the last 18 overall, and how well they've done on the road. So when you factor all of that in, I think it's going to be the public all over KC. Raphael, all week long, right up until game time, parlays, teasers, all that good stuff. We know where our good friends behind the counter in Las Vegas are going to be rooting for this week. Yeah, I mean, and so far the books have been very happy with all these teasers because the last four weeks, teasers have gone down huge. We saw it last week with Green Bay not even coming close to covering. You figure the books would be needing Jacksonville Jaguars to, to, to maybe only lose by a couple points and, and cover those teasers with Pittsburgh. And you said it's a late game, seven, seven and a half. You know everyone's going to be trying to tease. This is going to be a last leg at a teaser and parlay and money line parlays on this one. So the books are going to be huge Vegas fans. But let's face it, we might not even need to be Vegas fans if you're an odds maker because if the Steelers go down or maybe Baltimore goes down or maybe the Saints might be a small heavy favorite uh, a teaser team just because they're at home. If those two teams go down or the Chargers go down, we won't even need that late action. We could just sit back and enjoy a game. Yeah, I'll tell you what, real quickly, one of the changes I've made because of the weirdness of 2020 is I don't play nearly as many two-team NFL six-point teasers as I do normally 
I think I've had three or four, usually having an average of almost one per week throughout the course of a football season. So again, I'm down to three or four in like the first 10 weeks of the season. And it's just a change that I think, at least for my style of handicapping with everything that's going on, I thought was just something that I had to do. And it's probably been a good thing because uh, there's been a couple of instances where we've seen the so-called halves not really being as halves as they normally would be. And I love to tease down from seven, seven and a, you know, seven and a half down to one, one and a half, and just to stay away from it a little bit this season. All right, Raphael, it's a big weekend coming up. College football, NFL, UFC. What you got going for us this weekend? Yeah, you named, you just named three of them. And don't forget the MLS playoffs start for you soccer fans. They start on Friday, so can't wait to watch the MLS playoffs uh, kick off on Friday night. You got two games, two games on Saturday, and I think three or four on Sunday, so a great action. You can get all my – I'm on a ridiculous soccer run. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I try not to keep my own track numbers in my head because I don't want to jinx myself, but it's been a nice soccer run. I have a nice college football card uh, going this one as well. Hopefully we'll turn things around the NFL because the NFL, I'm not going to lie, it's been pitiful. So hopefully we turn things around and uh, have some big college winners. I think we went back-to-back winning Saturdays in college football, so hopefully we can continue uh, that run in college football. All right, sounds good. And uh, I'll be on all three sports I just mentioned, college football, NFL, UFC also. You know, I went to this uh, one fight per week nine cards ago, and I'm 6-2. and two. Uh, Didn't do – I had a fight all geared to go this past week, and it was one of the many that were canceled – uh, before the actual day of the event happened this past week. And uh, so we ended up not having any UFC this past week. But we'll look to uh, go to 7-2. and two. I do have a fight picked out. And then also wanted to mention uh, we have done well in college football, 60% on Saturdays last five weeks, and the big plays have been doing quite well. So we'll be in action uh, this weekend. All right, well, you, you know about – listen, if you're not yet a member of DocSports.com, you've heard me talk about it. It is the coolest way in the industry to take advantage of a trial run. Uh, You click on that link below the video, you can get yourself a free $60 account, and then you can use those free $60 on any of our daily packages over at DocSports.com. Raphael, mine, anybody on the roster at DocSports, and it is as simple as that. All right, guys, let's put them in the win column. We'll be right back here next week with a little bit more of Joe's versus Pro's.